Ribla Muhammad, man, they're feeding this guy to that Kazakilla. That guy is coming out like a calculated, missioned assassin, ready to take out Blah Muhammad. I mean, surely if Blah Muhammad defeats Shavka, he gets a title shot, right? He finally gets that deserved shot. Just for Hori to sleep burns in the first round, getting a title shot over Bilal. Conor McGregor knocks on Michael Chandler, calls out for his title shot, gets over Bilal. Islam Akashev moves up to 170 and gets the title shot over Bilal. I mean, the guy just can't catch a break, man. Too many stars can get that over him. Let's be honest about this really quick. There's a lot of points going around that Bilal Muhammad was screwed out of a title shot that he deserved. And as a hardcore fan, as someone who is a purist of the sport, yes, Bilal does deserve the title shot by default. He has enough ranked wins and a long enough win streak to outmerit anybody else in the welterweight division right now. He's right now on a nine unbeaten streak, four win streak, and defeated Damian Maya, Wonderboy, Vicente Luque, and Sean Brady in a row. Those are all ranked fighters. They weren't in exciting fashion. They're not kind of performances that people can't wait to see again. The Sean Brady fight was a little bit better, right? He got the TKO finish, but against a lesser ranked opponent, but still did it, right? He did it against someone who was ranked, which is not happening a lot for the welterweights. The only other guys doing something similar is Shafkat. Shafkat's being ranked fighters and finishing all of them. His performances are very exciting to watch. He's a skilled, entertaining fighter with a 100% finish rate. That is why I believe they want this fight with Bilal Muhammad, because yes, Bilal has better ranked wins, but his performances don't stack up to Shavkat. So they're kind of using this in the means of establishing the number one contender. But I do see a lot of people saying that Bilal should not accept the fight because right now it's not official. It's just in the works. These guys have to accept it. Shavkat's 100% going to accept it. It's up to Bilal. If Bilal wants to turn it down and wait for what he deserves, a title shot, it could come back to bite him. Because number one, we know the UFC doesn't like that kind of stuff. They don't like, especially non-stars to turn down opponents. If you're a superstar, if you're a Conor McGregor or something, you can kind of pick and choose who you want to fight. At least you have a say in it, right? But when you're Bilal Muhammad, and honestly, you will sell like two pay-per-view buys, you don't get that kind of special treatment. And honestly, neither does Leon Edwards. Leon is the champion. He just got the belt and defending against Kamaru Usman, but he's not a big star and he doesn't have longevity as a champion to be able to pick and choose his opponents because Leon is also saying that he's not going to accept a Colby fight. And that could also come back to bite him as well. The only way this works out is if both Bilal Bilal and Leon refuse to fight their next opponents and they campaign to fight each other and importantly the UFC would have to be on board with it that's the only way that kind of thing is going to happen but Dana seemed to be very much laser focused on having Colby fight Leon and Bilal fight Shavkat right and the reason for that is it's going to sell way more it makes a lot more sense because most people not just hardcore fans but most people would want to see those fights instead right most people would rather like to see Bilal versus Shavkat at least there's one finisher in that fight one guy's going to make it an exciting fight, whereas Bilal and Leon both kind of just wait on points a lot of times. It wouldn't be nearly as exciting. And Colby versus Leon, honestly, is very entertaining. I mean, everybody's going to watch the fight, regardless if they think that Bilal was screwed. In fact, I think a lot of people who are advocating for Bilal to fight Leon would watch Colby versus Leon instead. Let's say in a world where you can potentially watch both of those fights at the same time, everybody, even the people advocating for Bilal, would be watching the screen of Colby and Leon instead. And I think that's the whole mindset behind this. That's why Colby Covington, who also is arguably the biggest star in the welterweight division right now, if Jorge's star power has gone down so much, it's a no-brainer why he got the title shot against Leon. This has been a pattern that's been going on for so many years. I don't know how people were caught off guard by it. And if you get enough fans behind you, you get enough people watching you. For example, all the views and clicks that Colby got leading up to UFC 286. I mean, he was more talked about than even the two guys in the main event. That's what's usually going to happen. And Blah Muhammad was never that. He needs to do it the old-fashioned way, right? He needs to get the long win streak and eventually get this title shot over the bigger stars. Max Holloway had to do it in the featherweight division. Tony Ferguson had to do it. Tony Ferguson had to become a star, right? He actually created his own star by doing this, being exciting, being entertaining, as well as that crazy long win streak. He had to do the same thing. Leon Edwards had to do the same thing. That's the unfortunate part of being in a division where there's a superstar in your weight class, you know? And they're going to have a step ahead because they put people in seats. They put eyes on the fight. Now, for my opinion, I personally think Bilal Muhammad deserves it, right? He does. I think he's done enough, but that's not always enough. You got to do more than just that. You got to get people to care about your fights. And unfortunately for him, his performances were very lackluster. He's won those fights, but in a pure entertainment level, nobody really cared. I still remember all the memes after he beat Vicente Luque and Wonderboy. And those fights were not long ago. Like people were making memes of like sleeping during the fight and all that stuff. The Sean Brady was a decent performance where he at least got a finish. And that's what you need to see more from his career. And if you don't have the kind of finishing ability, you're going to need some kind of persona. You need to make people care 
somewhat. And that's what Colby did. Colby is a guy who didn't finish a lot of opponents, but he made people care about his fights because first he brought in the personality when he was a little bit more of a boring fighter years ago. And while he went into this whole personality thing, he also changed a bit of his fighting style too to make it more entertaining. He's not getting the finishes, but it's non-stop action and people love it. That's why Colby Covington, whether you like him or not, he draws your attention to his fights. Because of his personality, you want to see him win or lose, he fights in a more entertaining way. Now, I do see that uh, Leon and Islam and Max Holloway, they waited out for the title shots when they actually never did, right? Below Muhammad's case of refusing Shafkat and waiting for a title shot is different than what Leon did. Leon accepted a ton of fights. How many times did they offer him against Hamza and he accepted it? I think a couple he denied if I remember correctly, but he did accept a bunch of them too. He was supposed to fight Tyron Woodley. He was also supposed to fight Colby Covington, but the whole COVID thing made those fights almost impossible for him because he couldn't fight anywhere else besides the United Kingdom. Leon had a bit of bad luck, but he was accepting fights. He wasn't just waiting around. Islam Makhachev, same thing. He got scheduled three times to fight RDA, twice in 2020, one time in 2021, and he was scheduled to fight Benil Dariush in 2022. He was not just waiting around for his title shots. I remember he fought Bobby Green when Benil couldn't step in. Yair Rodriguez, same thing. Yair didn't just refuse everybody. He, he refused the beat and it bit him. Look what happened to him when he refused to beat. That's what could potentially happen to Bilal Muhammad. And Yair is a fun fighter to watch. He's an exciting guy to watch. And look what happened to him when he refused to fight Zabit. What do you think would happen to Bilal Muhammad? And Yair came back. He accepted the Max Holloway fight. Tough fight for him. But he put on a strong performance. And then he beat Josh Emmett where Alexander Volkanovsky was moving his way up to a 155. And he finished Emmett. That's how he's getting his title shot. And the 145 pound division is completely different because there aren't really any stars there comparable to what Lightweight and Welterweight has. 145 is a pure meritocracy. You have to earn your title shot. Back when Max Holloway had to fight a ton was because Conor McGregor was there, right? He got the belt and stuff and he moved up to 155 and jammed up the 145 and 155 pound divisions. There are no more Conor McGregors at 145. So you have to literally just earn your title shot now. It's a whole different situation when you have stars in the weight class. And when I say stars, I mean guys who draw like more than 300,000 buys, you know, more than 400,000 buys. Colby Covington versus Usman drew like 700,000 or something crazy. And they were so confident that they put him against Hori Mazdal as a main event of a pay-per-view, even though we saw Hori's star power dwindle in those Usman fights. And that was after the second Usman fight where he got knocked unconscious. You can only imagine that Hori's star power in that fight was less than even that. Them two together sells itself, you know? And now the organization is confident and they trust Colby Covington's numbers to put him up against Leon Edwards. The guy is absolutely a star and he's going to get some special treatment and the crazy thing about Bilal is not only is his spot for a title shot not even secure right now he actually has to put on somewhat of a decent performance against Shavka I believe as well because imagine if Jorge Masvidal knocks Gilbert Burns out unconscious like flat lines him and makes it easy very easy fight explosive angles viral all over social media Jorge could also leapfrog Bilal Muhammad for a title shot if Leon were to beat Colby Covington because Leon would absolutely be campaigning for that fight too. That's how much being a name actually matters. Even Leon Edwards, who's all about meritocracy, 100% would call out Hori over Bilal if Hori knocks out Gilbert Burns. Whether we like it or not, that is reality. If Bilal somehow, I don't see it happening, but if Bilal like somehow lay and pray Shavkat into a boring decision, even Gilbert Burns could potentially get a title shot over him if he like finishes Hori Masvidal. And here's the thing as well, if Bilal refuses Shavkat, they might throw Shavkat above him or the winner of Jorge and Burns goes and fights Shavkat for the number one contender while they throw Bilal Muhammad like Jeff Neal or something. Now in the world that Bilal actually accepts the fight against Shavkat, it's a tough fight for him, man. It's a horrible mismatch for Bilal Muhammad. What does Bilal honestly do to Shavkat? He's a good fighter. Like he could beat a lot of the other guys. This is nothing against Bilal, but objectively looking at the fight, what does he do against Shavkat? Does he outstrike him? His striking doesn't look nearly as good as crisp as fast, as powerful, as precise as Shavkat's in any aspect. Shavkat does leave his chin up, but Bilal is shorter. He reaches in with his punches, which is going to be really easy for Shavkat to move away. Shavkat keeps his head open, but he moves his feet very well, right? You have to get in on him. You have to be a boxer of like Jeff Neal to catch him. And Bilal Muhammad does not have Jeff Neal hands. I mean, Jeff Neal outboxed Bilal when they fought each other completely. I mean, he dropped him twice in the fight. And ever since 2019, when they fought each other, Bilal's hands have been looking better, but nothing that really surprises me. Like there's nothing I think from Bilal's striking game that's going to give Shavkat issues. And he's going to wrestle Shavkat. Is that the route he would go? I mean, he would probably have to mix it up. That's how he does his best work. But Shavkat is bigger, seems to be stronger, has that insane 
insanely long reach, right? I believe they're like, what? And Shavkat has legitimate grappling skills, some amazing submission ability as well. Can catch you in any position, and he's really hard to take to the ground too. Bilal is not like an expert in any field. He's a jack of all trades, relies on his skill and well-roundedness, but Shavkat seems to be much more capable in the striking as well as the wrestling and the grappling. And he has more power with his hands, and he's faster, and he has better footwork, and he has all the physical attributes from the reach to the strength, to all of that stuff. I mean, it honestly seems like the worst match a Bilal could possibly have. If he was a knockout artist, then he has a chance. I think the plans are to get Shavka to eventually fight Leon or Colby, whoever has the title, because no matter who he fights, it's going to be fun. He has the look, the athleticism, and the fighting style that would garner even the casual fans to want to watch him. And eventually, I think they want to put together the Hamza fight. Hamza versus Shavka is such a crazy good fight that they eventually would have to put together, whether at 185 or 170, because I do believe Shavka could make 185 if he focuses on doing it.